Jesus answered Nathanael, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. In the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're like me, and I think you are at least a little, because you're part of the Missouri Synod too, the Show Me Synod, you look at life at least a good part of the time with a healthy dose of skepticism. If you want to convince me of something, a logical argument goes a lot further than an emotional narrative with a complicated plot line. I like to analyze things. Yes, and overanalyze and overthink things with the best of them. I don't readily attribute mysterious sounds to ghosts and goblins. I tend to think that when things go bump in the night, they're more likely to be the result of a branch against the house or a squirrel on the roof or the dogs. My first thought is not something supernatural. I think God just wires people that way when he doles out our reason and all our senses. There is such a thing as healthy skepticism. It guards against superstition and generally wards off strange ideas and mistaken notions, not to mention a lot of bad religious ideas. Now, as an aside, there is something worse that can happen when sin gets into the mix. Sin can turn healthy skepticism into a deeply hardened cynicism, and that's not good. Sin can stunt the imagination and blind us to the things that are unseen, the things that are above. Man does not live by hard evidence alone. Our technologies do. They rely on hard data. Our courts rely on hard evidence. And when I make a decision as to whether it's safe to cross the street, I do not simply close my eyes and pray. Nevertheless, some of the most important things in this life are held without hard evidence in hand. When I think of skepticism, I tend to think of Philip's friend Nathaniel. By comparison to Nathaniel, Philip seems downright impulsive, if not reckless even. By John's account in his gospel that we heard, Jesus decides to head north to Galilee. He encounters Philip, says to him just two words, follow me. And without so much as a word or a question in reply, Philip does exactly that. He follows Jesus. Philip then proceeds to rush out and get his friend Nathaniel to come and meet this Jesus whom Philip is now following. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Philip is so excited, he doesn't get all of his theological T's crossed and I's dotted about Jesus. We have found him. No, that's backwards. Jesus would straighten that out later. Philip is enthusiastic. And that's okay. He's face to face with the Messiah, the Christ, the one for which everybody's been waiting. And the Messiah turns out to be the man named Jesus from Nazareth, the son of the carpenter Joseph. Now, how Philip knows all of this already about Nazareth, about Jesus being the son of Joseph, we don't know. We're not told. All Jesus said to Philip was, follow me. But however he knew it, Philip is all gung-ho about Jesus and can't wait to tell his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel is a bit more skeptical than Philip. You've heard of Doubting Thomas. Meet skeptical Nathaniel. Nazareth, you say. Ha! Can anything good come from there? In Nathaniel's defense, Nazareth was hardly the place from which anybody expected the Messiah to come. Nazareth is a town not even mentioned in the 39 books of the Old Testament. It was a town of maybe 500, 
way up in the North Country, a kind of military post watching over the Northern Highlands. That gave something of a reputation to Nazareth, what with all those soldiers hanging around in the middle of nowhere. You know the kind of trouble that can ensue with a pocket full of cash and a furlough. Honestly, can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip's answer to that is very simple and rather priceless. Come and see. Never mind your preconceived notions, Nathaniel. Never mind your prejudices, your skepticism. Just come and see for yourself. When Nathaniel does, let's just say that the experience for him is memorable. Before they even shake hands and are introduced, Jesus says of Nathaniel, with tongue seemingly firmly planted in cheek, look, a true Israelite in whom there is no guile, somebody who tells it exactly like it is, which catches Nathaniel off guard. Jesus seems to know him, but they've never met. How do you know me, Nathaniel asks. Well, Jesus says, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. That may not seem like a lot to us. It definitely impressed Nathaniel, though. So we have to assume that we're probably missing a couple of details. It may be as simple as that nobody was around when Nathaniel was having his little fig tree moment. And now Jesus claims to have seen him. Whatever it was, those words of Jesus cut through Nathaniel's skepticism and draw out his true and faithful confession. Rabbi, teacher, you are the king of Israel. Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. Nathaniel saw and heard and believed. That will become a pattern throughout John's gospel, culminating in what Jesus will say to doubting Thomas after Easter, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, which would include the likes of you and me. And Jesus then hints at much more to come. Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? That was nothing, Nathaniel. You will see greater things than these. You will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus identifying himself with the ladder in Jacob's dream in the Old Testament, the ladder connecting heaven with earth. Not a ladder of our ascent to God, but of God's descent to us. He came down from heaven, as we just confessed, to be Emmanuel, to be God with us. He came down from heaven to die for us, conquer sin and death for us, rise for us, bring us to the Father, be the sole mediator between God and man. Oh yes, Nathaniel, greater things you will see than me knowing you were under a fig tree. In the other Gospels, in Matthew and Mark and Luke, Nathaniel is not called Nathaniel there, but is historically identified with there and called Bartholomew. One of the twelve disciples of Jesus, but among the twelve of whom we know the least. So we have to go to history and church tradition, and history and church tradition tell us that Nathaniel eventually brought the Gospel of Jesus to India and to Armenia. Nathaniel is revered as the patron saint of, of the Armenian church to this day. And history and church tradition also tell us three traditions, three legends about the martyrdom of Nathaniel, skeptical Nathaniel. One says that he was kidnapped and drowned at sea. Another says that he was crucified upside down. A third, and probably the most enduring, is that he was skinned alive. One thing is certain, Jesus was right. Nathaniel now sees greater things than he ever saw that day 
under the fig tree. And it all began when skeptical Nathaniel became believer and disciple Nathaniel when he came and saw and heard the words of Jesus. That's really what the thing we call evangelism is all about. The invitation to come and see and hear Jesus for yourself. Skeptics that are still out there still wonder today, though, can anything good come out of the church? I don't know if you know it, but the church's reputation isn't always very good out there. There is word on the street of greed and worse, hypocrisy. There are skeptics today who wonder whether any of what we talk about in here is true or is just a bunch of silly, wishful thinking. Can anything good come out of Christianity? I can assure you of this. Skeptical men like Nathaniel don't get skinned alive for silly, wishful thinking. And really, I think the best way to answer the skeptics today is still Phillips. Come and see. Come and hear. Because what you will see and hear here are greater things that can be seen or heard anywhere else. People reborn and renewed in Christ, sins forgiven, sinners justified, men and women made right with God, the faithful falling asleep in the sure confidence that they will open their eyes in paradise. Come and see. Come and hear. Hear what God in Christ has done and is doing. Invite your friends and family to do the same. Come and receive what God in Christ has done and is doing by His Spirit for you. Come and hear the forgiveness of your sins. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.